Yeah, you can hear that grind. So another reason why the mechanic said that this vehicle would fail at safety was because of the rotors. Now I don't have the ability to grind down the rotors, so I'll just go ahead and replace the existing rotors. And while I'm at it, I might as well also replace uh, brake pads. I'm going to do this on both sides on the front of the vehicle, so let's get started. So we have our parking brake set. We've chalked both rear wheels. We're then going to use a 19 millimeter end on our lug nut remover right there. So with these lug nuts, we're going to not remove them, we're going to just loosen them, break them loose while the car is still on the ground. Then we're going to jack up the car directly in the center beneath the emblem, right underneath the car. So Honda puts a plastic arrow right here to point rearward. Directly in the center of the vehicle we have our jack mounted right on that cross uh, brace right there. That's where we're going to jack from. Once we've jacked the car up completely into the air, we're going to install our jack stands on the support spots right here. We're then going to remove the rest of our lug nuts all the way, remove the wheel. So we're on the passenger side and the first thing I did was I turned the driver's steering wheel to get better access to the caliper. And what we're going to do is there is a total of four bolts we're going to break loose to start. The first is here. This holds the caliper, which is this part, to the brace that holds the caliper on. So there's one bolt here, it's a size 12, and there's another one that matches it right there on size 12. So we got to break those loose first. But while we're breaking loose bolts, this bolt right here is a 17 millimeter, and there's a another one that mates with it right there. And we're gonna break all four of those bolts loose, but not remove them all. We're then gonna remove only this bolt here, so that way this thing will swing up and not put tension on our brake line. Once this is swung up, we'll be able to remove our brake pads because we're going to be replacing our pads and our rotor. Uh, once that's in, we'll swing the whole thing back down and take out the four bolts that, uh, the two bolts that hold uh, the um, the mounting bracket on, and take apart this whole uh, caliper and the brace. We're also going to use a 12 millimeter to remove the bolt here, so that way there's no tension on our brake line. Once this is completely off, we'll rest it right here. This looks like a good spot to rest it because we don't want to put any tension on our brake line and risk damaging it. So I've loosened the four bolts that I mentioned. So this one, that one, and the two that marry it on the other side, they're all loose. I've also loosened uh, this bolt right here so the line is loose. I actually removed both bolts. So you can see the two here that were in here and here. And then with some uh, elbow grease, I was able to pull off the caliper and I have it resting right up there. The two brake pads are sitting right here and the thickness on them looks great. I don't really know why I'm replacing them, but I figure if I'm getting a new rotor, I might as well just get new pads and everything will work smoothly. So there's only one way that these fit in from what I'm told and they're slotted. So you can see the slot there and then the slot at the bottom. It fits right into this groove right there and into that groove right there. So it just slides right in like that and in like that. These pieces here, this piece and this piece, uh, they, they come out. So I'm going to wire brush them and then put some uh, lubricant on these so it slides freely on both sides, uh, top and bottom, as well as the pad on the inside. So this is the other pad right here same exact idea. 
I guess the next thing is to maybe remove these clips. So the clips came up pretty easy, just force them up and they come out. So that's the bottom one. The top one here I've already kind of wiggled loose a little bit. But same idea, you just kind of wiggle it down. Looks like that. So those are the two surfaces the pads slide on that I'll be ultimately cleaning up before I reinsert them. The next thing we're going to do is remove the two bolts all the way. We've already broken these loose there and well uh, down down here at the back so there and that bolt there now this whole assembly will come off so we removed those two bolts this comes out just like that so to give you an idea what it looks like the two smaller pins screw into these slots right here there's slider pins in here that compress and you can pull out uh, and that's how part of the caliper works um, and then on the back side here, these were where the 17 millimeter bolts were. So again, it just kind of sits on the rotor just like that. And how we removed it finally were these bigger bolts here. So we're going to set this aside for now. And we'll get back to it later. But now let's try to remove these two uh, screws and get the rotor off. Um, and once they're removed, if it still won't come off the rotor, apparently you can screw them into these holes right here and that applies pressure to force the rotor off. So I ended up putting the little bit into a quarter inch ratchet, applied some pressure inward and while I rotated and they both broke loose, so that's good news. So once I was able to remove those two screws that were in these bolts, I was able to just wiggle the rotor and it came loose. Fortunately, it broke free from the hub uh, really easily. So it wasn't rust welded from here to there. Uh, otherwise, you can see where those two empty holes are in the rotor. So there's four uh, small screws, two of which are actually threaded in. Two are sort of blank, so you could have used a leverage to push on those by re-threading in those areas. I should have also mentioned a little earlier that before uh, you start doing anything. I sprayed down the entire thing with this brake cleaner stuff. Uh, what it does is it prevents any dust from uh, going airborne and you don't want to breathe any of this stuff in. So I'm using this brake cleaner um, often just to keep everything wet so that way no dust goes in the air. And I'll spray it down before I use my wire brush to clean the hub. Uh, and then we're going to use some anti-seize so that way it comes off just as easy the next time. So I wire brushed, I then sprayed it again with brake cleaner. Used a little uh, cloth to clean up the surface as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm now going to apply this anti-seize silver grade. Um, there's other grades that are better, but this will work just fine. And I'm going to apply it only to this surface and do my best to not get it on any of the threads. So I put some of this anti-seize on about just over half so you can see the difference between the uncovered and the covered area. I'm just going to finish this up now. So I ordered my pads and rotors in the mail. They did come. So now we're going to open it up. Before we install them, we're definitely going to want to compare these to the ones we're replacing. Make sure they're the, they're the right size. And it looks like we got a box inside a box. There we go. That looks like one rotor. And we have a second rotor. And it looks like we have our set of ceramic brake pads. I uh, definitely wanted to go with like a medium grade of this. Nothing really too low. Nothing high performance, obviously. It's not a high performance car. But something uh, sort of medium grade. Um, and I think that this will work just perfect. So there's a shot of the ceramic brake pads that I'll be using. And these are the rotors that I got. So here's a shot of the old uh, rotor and the new rotor beside one another. There's an electrophoric uh, rust prevention coating on this one, so I kind of think this is even better than the old one. I already measured the diameters are the same. The bolt pattern is the same, so this should go on no problem. Uh, I haven't touched it with my dirty gloves yet. I plan to take off my dirty gloves before I handle this. I'm also going to use some brake cleaner. Even though this looks fairly clean, there's usually an oil that's pr uh, provided onto the rotor for shipping so it doesn't rust while it's sitting on the shelf. 
um, and I want to remove that oil so that it exposes to the elements and obviously to the brake pads to make sure that there is a nice solid contact and they perform as intended. So I'm going to make sure I apply the brake uh, cleaner on both sides, outside and inside. And I'm going to do, uh, use clean gloves when I handle the, the rotor itself. So I sprayed on some of this brake cleaner on the mating surfaces, wiped it with a clean towel. And you already see some of the oils and stuff that were on it that have come off. So now that it's clean, we're ready to install on our hub with our two little screws right there. So we got the new rotor installed. We put in our two bolts here. The next thing we're going to do is prior to installing the, the caliper bracket, we're going to clean it up a little bit. The hardware that the brake pads sit in is here, here, and then the same on the other side. So we're going to use some brake cleaner and our wire brush right there to clean up these surfaces. So I finished using the brake cleaner and the wire brush just so that way the fittings uh, that will uh, slide onto these two ends here and here will sit nice and firm. Also, the uh, 12 millimeter screws that hold uh, the caliper to this bracket itself are screwed into these pins. These pins extend all the way in and they slide inside. Uh, these things will ultimately slide all the way out and they'll pop free. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use some uh, silicone lubricant. We're going to try to remove as much of the old lubricant as possible and then apply some new lubricant in there so they um, slide properly. Uh, you want to use a silicone based lubricant, not a petroleum based, because the petroleum will gum up and eat away at the, the rubber housing right there. Uh, the rubber seats on um, uh, housing once it pops all the way in. So now both of them you can sort of see the grease kind of just kind of coming out right there. Uh, so there's new grease in both of these. We are now going to clean off our hardware. These sort of sit in the grooves here. It's easier to do this while it's off the vehicle. So I've had these sitting in some CLR or rust remover, calcium lime and rust remover. They clean up pretty good. You can always buy new ones. They're pretty cheap. Uh, to buy new ones but I forgot to so we're gonna just keep using these ones they're not damaged they look really good actually uh, I'm just gonna uh, use a cloth just similar to this and continue to clean off as much of the stuff as I can and then they just sort of snap back in the place just by sliding them down over these two ridges right here and here and that's where these uh, two bits sit just in there like that and it's identical on both sides for this car So I've slid the hardware in here and here. I was sure on the inside that it seated properly uh, You can see that the hardware has like this little lip that hooks around so it can only fit in one Way if it's too far to the left or too far to the right the two pieces on the end won't fold in So it's got to be centered in the right spot and then slid right in same for both of them. Once we're done that, we'll install it with the 17 millimeter bolts here and here, back onto the back of the hub there and down there. Before I install the two 17 millimeter bolts that holds this bracket onto the knuckle like that, I'm gonna first use some medium thring blue thread locker on the threads there, just because it's a high vibration area and I don't want these bolts to come loose. So once I insert them, I'll uh, torque them down to 80 foot-pounds. So these are the old pads, these are the new pads. There's a little tab right here, and when I took this off, I know th noticed that this was on the inside behind the rotor. What this is used for is if you wear your pad down to close to being empty, it'll scratch, it, scratch against the rotor making a noise to let you know your pads are almost done. Now the pads of these are okay but these are brand new so I might as well use them because I already bought them. Before I install these I'm going to put some anti-seize on the back plates of these so they remain uh, free. Also off camera I already put on that same silicone antifreeze, that stuff right there, on both the inside and the outside so that way when these uh, little grooves here slide in and out they uh, smoothly operate. Brake pads inserted and pressed against the rotor just like so, fitting perfectly. 
in the hardware there. I've uh, lowered the caliper. There's no tension on this. Um, I'm going to need to squeeze this piston down so I can fit the wider uh, brake pads in here. But before I compress this, I'm just going to spray some uh, brake cleaner on a fresh cloth and try to clean the perimeter of the cylinder here so that way when it's pressed in it doesn't get dirt under this rubber seal. I'm not going to spray this directly on here because I don't want to get as much, I want to get as little brake cleaner as I can on the rubber parts. Force this cylinder back in which I've already done which is why it looks flush. I first put in the old brake pad kind of like uh, to evenly distribute the pressure. Now you can use C-clamp like this and you're basically squeezing this part inward by pinching on there but because it's rubber on the surfaces I use this instead and it worked perfectly as you can see it's now flush uh, with the uh, caliper itself so this should easily slide back into place. I'm now going to apply blue Loctite medium strength on the threads of these bolts here before I then install them here and down here 25 foot pounds and that secures the caliper to the caliper mounting bracket. Once that's done, I'm going to also put thread locker on the bolt that goes here to hold the brake line into the brace right here. I'm then going to use the brake cleaner one last time and clean off the rotor both inside and outside. Notice I didn't get brake cleaner on the pads. You don't want to soak them in brake cleaner, but clean off the rotor one last time. Put on the uh, wheel, tighten down the lug nuts, 80 foot-pounds on this vehicle, lower it off the jack stands, pump the brake pedal a few times uh, to build up pressure and recompress this caliper, and then we'll be ready to go. But before we do any of that, we also have to do the other side first, so I'll do that off camera. I spent $56 on the rotors and $27 on the brake pads. And despite buying them online from the US and it costing $77 for shipping and duty, it was still cheaper to do it that way than buying from a physical store near where I lived. I also spent a few dollars on some brake lubricant for the slider pins, some anti-seize to go on the hub, and blue thread locker, which I did use for the previous video regarding the coil springs, but I included the cost of it here. And lastly, I did use brake cleaner in this video, but I purchased it previously and I documented it in a previous video. So in total, it cost me about $192, taxes in Canadian, to replace the pads and rotors on the front of this vehicle. I now have $898 into this car.